Welcome to Bug Me Not, Big Talks for Kids. My name is Tatiana and I'm so happy you're here. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for the extra love and support. I love reading your messages on Instagram and your emails. You can't imagine the joy that you bring into my heart. And I hope that I can return all the love, caring, and trust in every single episode. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. This is episode number five, and today we are going to talk about anger. What makes me angry? Is it okay to feel this way? And how do I feel physically and emotionally? And how to deal with this feeling when someone hurts me or when I'm the one to blame? This is our special place to open our hearts, share ideas and feelings But in order for this to happen, we need to be honest, right? Can you imagine if I come here and just speak half-truth and only present, show you one side of the story, one side of life, one side of me, and not showing the other side? And I know that's wonderful to talk about fun adventures, and pets, but it's also important to talk about fear and anger, and you know why? I learned that there's a lot of feelings and emotions inside of me. I am not happy all the time, and I'm not sad all the time, and sometimes we feel more than one emotion in a single situation. Today, for example, Mel, my oldest daughter, stopped by for a visit. And she was welcomed with orange and carrot cake and also Brazilian cheese bread. Ava was so happy. Our hearts were filled with joy and happiness and also a feeling of longing Missing our family in Brazil. In Portuguese, we call this feeling of longing, desire to be with someone or somewhere that you love so much, or that feeling when you love someone, a place or something, and then you're not around it or around them anymore. And it's not like you miss them. Is way deeper than just missing. And we call it saudade. And this word is just found in the Portuguese and Galician vocabulary. There is no direct translation in English. You see, you learn something new every day. And with Mel's visit... Our hearts were filled with joy and also saudade, missing our family in Brazil. Have you ever felt that way, mixed emotions? Sometimes it's not very clear to me what I am feeling. Once an embarrassment turned into anger. And another time, I felt angry when in reality, I was frustrated and disappointed in myself. My first home in the U.S. was in Georgia. And at that time, I had very basic English skills. My first job in the United States was as a volunteer for the American Red Cross. And that's something that I'm very proud of. I worked at the hospital in the military post. I basically helped the nurses and the doctors. I would take the patients to the rooms 
prepare the rooms and insert their information on the system or save their information on the computer. Now let me tell you something about me. Everything that I do in life, I do with pride, caring, and a big smile on my face. You know, as a volunteer, I didn't have a lot of responsibilities, but everything that I did, I did with lots of love. One day, I escorted a couple of elderly patients to the room. The lady was friendly and chatty, but her husband was more reserved. While I was preparing the room, she asked me what I was from and she asked me about Brazil. I started to talk about the culture, the food, the weather and the beautiful places. She was so excited. At this moment, her husband looks at me with a very serious look in a cold tone and says, If Brazil is so wonderful, why are you here? It took me a while to process what he said. Remember, very basic English at that time. Can you imagine how embarrassed I felt? And worse than this feeling was the frustration on trying to find words to protect myself from such rudeness. His wife reprehended him right away. She apologized and she was so embarrassed. On the way back to the front desk, I was very disturbed. Not quite embarrassed, but I was definitely angry. I was so puzzled and confused, trying to understand why he treated me like that. And the fact that I wasn't able to communicate, express myself in English, was so upsetting. And I remember that I got a big headache that day. And by the end of that day, time passed by, the headache was gone. But that feeling, the feeling of anger, was not. And let me tell you, it was not make me feel good. Then, I started to think about possibilities, reasons why he acted that way. Number one, if he had a doctor appointment, that means he was not feeling well. He wasn't a hundred percent. Number two, maybe... Right before he met me, somebody was really rude to him. And number three, definitely he knows nothing of Brazil. And the combination of these possible reasons may explain his attitude that day. And then I realized that his attitude and his anger was a reflection of how he was feeling in the inside. And that had nothing to do with me. Afterwards, he didn't know me. What if I treated him the same way he treated me? Would that be a good choice? Would I be proud of myself? Well, definitely not. You see... I cannot allow people to hurt me physically, my body, or emotionally, my feelings. At the same time, I cannot allow myself to become them, copying their actions, attitude. Did you know that I love martial arts? I have taken jiu-jitsu and karate classes. One time, my dad and I traveled to attend a karate competition. I always loved to see new places, get to know different people, and especially come back home with shiny golden medals. 
when we got to the tournament, our sensei gathered everybody and said, 30 minutes before your competition, gather your group and practice your kata. Kata is a pattern of movements, defense and attack. Simulates a fight. You can practice solo or in group. But everything in the tournament was so fascinating that I totally got distracted. Suddenly, I heard my name being called. My heart was racing. I looked to my left, then to my right, and I couldn't find my group. Whenever I was able to get to the mat, I noticed my group was incomplete. At this moment, I was taken by a feeling of indignation and rage. I was so angry. And for some reason, I forgot that I was late as well. That's because it's easier to blame others than to look inside us. A few minutes before our competition, the group was finally complete. But you can imagine, at this point, we were so nervous. And that's not because we forgot the kata, but because we skipped a big, important step. The preparation before the competition. Besides training, the review of the kata, a hug, a prayer, are important steps as well. And at the end of that day, we came back home without a golden medal. As a matter of fact, we came home with empty hands. What a horrible feeling of failure and anger. I was definitely looking for someone or something to blame. On the way back home, I was thinking, how come my dad didn't check the time? I also tried to blame the girl who was late. I even thought of a referee's mistake. I blamed everything and everyone but myself. Because I was holding onto anger and frustration, I couldn't see things clearly. Sometimes we need help to see and understand a situation and ourselves better. And that night, before going to bed, my dad invited me to a good conversation. And I'm gonna be honest, I thought, that would be a harsh conversation. And thank God I was wrong. My dad reminded me how hard I trained and how dedicated I was to be the leader. And I was well aware of the responsibilities of being a leader. And after all that training, on the big day, I was distracted at that moment, I comprehended, I realized that I was not angry with someone or something. I was frustrated with myself because deep down I knew that I failed my group and myself. But the good news is that we always, always have a chance to fix our mistakes, to say sorry, and to be better. And that's exactly what I did in the following week in karate class. Reflection of the day. You can close your eyes, or maybe not. You can even do a little dance. Do Whatever makes you comfortable. Sometimes I wonder, how could the karate tournament have been better? 
How could I have handled my feelings better? Then I can think of two possibilities. First of all, I could have been more responsible, more committed, focusing on the competition and on Sensei's guidance. And that way, I would never be late. The other possibility would be getting late. I would not blame anyone. I would apologize and do my best on the kata. Can you see? On that situation, I would have two options. To avoid. Avoid blaming others, the anger and the irresponsibility. Or to deal with. Dealing with my emotions and understanding what I'm feeling. Remember, I thought that I was angry with everyone and everything. But in reality, I was sad and frustrated with myself. What about you? Have you ever felt that way? So sure of your emotions But then you realized that you are feeling something completely different. Can you see now the importance of understanding ourselves and our feelings? Can you imagine then the situation at the karate tournament in the hospital would be so much lighter and easier to handle? You know what works for me, what helps me, whenever I feel those emotions not so pleasant like anger. It brings so much peace to my heart when I talk to God and I pray. I also like to dance my favorite songs and sing along. And sometimes I like to ride a bike and feel the wind on my face. What about you? What do you like to do that helps you deal with emotions that are not so pleasant? What makes you feel better? Remember, you can contact me by email bugmenot.podcast.com at gmail.com or our Instagram account at bugmenot.podcast And on the next episode we are going to talk about sports the importance of sports and the benefits on your mental health your mind in your physical health, your body. I'm gonna tell you every single sports that I practiced and the ones that someday I will. And of course, I will share so many memories with you. Thank you so much for listening. I am so grateful for you. Be the most beautiful you. You are so loved. I'll see you soon.